Hey guys, welcome back to the Korea China Invitational League. This has been actually a very fun match so far. I've definitely seen a lot of people enjoying this one, even though it looks one sided at the moment. Fengji hasn't actually won a map yet, and Bishop in this nine game series is up five to zero. But Bishop's technical play seems to really resonate with everyone watching. Uh, definitely some great micros, some really interesting build orders, some great decision making. And honestly, Fengji is putting up a good fight. Like, we've had several games here that were tightly contested. Uh, but I do wonder if he's maybe, like, losing some steam at this point. Uh, those last couple games, a little bit more one-sided into Bishop's favor. But we'll see, right? We're on Nemesis. This is definitely a very strange and different map. Uh, you know, Nemesis, as you can see, it's got the double assimilator with two eggs, the mineral to path through. You kill the eggs, it opens it up. All units can fit through. You kill off one assimilator, and suddenly only small units like Zealot and Hydra are the biggest ones that can fit through at that point. You kill both, nothing fits through, right? So uh, that brings you to these expansions, which have far fewer resources, right? 1,000 per patch instead of the normal 1.5,000. And then 3,000 for the gas instead of 5,000 for the gas. Uh, also, not that many bases here. Only 12 bases on the map total, four of which are low uh, as far as income goes that I just showed you, right? So definitely Nemesis gives you a very different looking game. Now, Fengji going to go ahead and take his natural expansion. Pretty normal. Bishop going to go ahead and wall in. Uh, it looks like he is just going to do a fast expansion here and probably just go into some bio play. Uh, no gas as of yet. So it definitely doesn't look like we're going to see like wraiths or quick factory or anything like that. That would not generally be considered a strong build from this point. Fengji getting his pool. We'll see if he throws that gas down next. I imagine that he will. And uh, that'll basically tell us how this game is going to look going forward. Like, is this going to be a two hatch play? He's actually got to throw it down really soon if he's going to go two hatch. Oh, well, I guess he's not. Look at that. Yeah, so Fengji is going to go for a quick three hatch replay. See this drone here? Going to just glide through by grabbing those minerals. And we'll see him go over. He actually mined it out. I think he wants nothing else to drill in here, so... One of the first drones he sends down will probably finish that. But he goes ahead, takes a third base on location very quickly. Uh, and so that's three base, like, instantly. Now, Bishop, coming up right now, you'll see how late this gas is. And he actually has put up a gas himself, like a very fast gas. This looks like he was thinking about a plus one build. But plus one here might not necessarily be the best play. We might actually see him just go into a factory at this point uh, since he already got the gas. I don't know, of course, exactly what his plan was. Generally, again, you won't see like a wall into gas to get factory against two hatchery play. Uh, so I do think he was planning that quick plus one. But yeah, it does look more like he'll probably tech up at this point. When your opponent takes very fast three bases like this and it's very hard to attack, uh, generally, you're going to want to tech up very quickly. Like, extra marines aren't going to really do anything for you. So anyways, this uh, SCV gets in, sees the hatchery. The Ling's already going to work on the assimilators. They want to kill those off before any bio can come out to try to kill the eggs. So good play there. Factory on the way. SCV's being sent up to that natural expansion. Of course, he's got enough marines that he's not really afraid of anything right now as well. Gonna start killing off these eggs. Yeah, <laughs> opening up the path for him to go in and reinforce and closing off the path that you may attack through. Uh, obviously over here, this is another possible path that Bishop could utilize, but it does take a while to kill eggs and that is pretty far out of the way. Now, evolution chamber, ooh, okay. So when this type of map first came out, this was a very popular build for it. What this uh, tells us, the speed of this evolution chamber, is that Fengji wants to go for Crazy Zerg, almost certainly. This will be a carapace upgrade that he starts right away. There it is. And Crazy Zerg, for those of you wondering, and uh, this will probably just be a Spire. All right, let's just double check. He's waiting for that gas. There we go. Uh, and there it is. So it's a Spire and the plus one carapace very, very quickly. So if you're wondering, Crazy Zerg is when you skip 
lurkers and you skip defilers and you go directly to ultralisks. So it's basically like your defense is based off of sunken colonies, mutalisks, and zerglings. Uh, and then you just, you get like double carapace upgrade basically. Once this hits plus two and you get uh, carapace for ultras, you're trying to get ahead of your opponent's upgrade. So that's, that's the thought process. Uh, and you just make a lot of ultras. So anyways, very popular on maps like this that we've had in the past. Right, uh, some maps like Optimizer, and I'm, I'm forgetting some of the names of them, but there's been a lot of maps that are kind of similar to this. This map, of course, based off of Outsider, uh, which is a very old map that had like a ring of expansions that were hard to get to. So yeah, that's that's what we're seeing here from Feng Shui. I like the idea. It definitely has potential to work. And double uh, barracks coming up, uh, and the eBay just finished. Okay, so there's a plus one. And let's see how that lines up with the plus one carapace. Yeah, he's halfway ahead. So there's going to be a period of like a minute and a half where Fengji is up an upgrade. That's very, very powerful. Uh, now, that being said, the type of build that we're seeing here, if he floats this over here and lands it, as opposed to floats it for like scouting intel, there is a possibility that we see a mech switch. <coughs> Especially since... We see the plus one ship weapons coming up. The plus one uh, ship weapons are for the Valkyries so that you just have a really strong uh, anti-air force with those Valks to kind of make it so that you don't need to make Goliaths. So yeah, this is this is gearing up to be like a really interesting game. By the way, fourth base is going up here. He's closing off these as well. So Fangxi getting a gigantic economy together. But this could be a very scary push that comes out as well, since he is going to have multiple Valkyries. Those Mutalisks are not going to fare particularly well, uh, especially as that plus one finishes up for those. And he actually does start Flyer Carapace, but just like the uh, Armor Carapace is ahead for Fengji, uh, the Flyer Carapace is behind. So the Valkyrie is going to have a big edge over Mutalisks for a while, and there's definitely going to be edges for the Ultras over the Marines as well. So, a third Valkyrie coming up. He does make the add-on. Okay, guys, I'm really pretty certain here that we're going to see a mech switch. Which is probably a good idea. Excuse me, probably a good idea. Uh, you know, the Crazy Zerg is meant to fight against Marine Medic. It's really hard to beat mass ultras with just Marines and Medics. Uh, since you have to keep, like, a huge critical mass. And if they ever get into Defiler, you'll just die. Uh, <clears throat> but... Mech can definitely deal with that. Now, we'll see. I mean, I, I can't say 100%, but the fact that I see this add-on, I've seen a lot of builds like this where you go for the plus one air attacks and then you go into mass uh, mech behind it. You do get like one or two upgrades for your Marines, sometimes just plus one attack, sometimes one, one, and you kind of roam with them and try to keep some map control, keep some pressure on. But really, the uh, overall aim is to get into that mech upgrade. And there's the second factory. So definitely that is what we're going to see. Uh, you know, he'll produce bio for a little bit longer, probably just to keep some uh, some control out there. You want these to cover the, the Valkyries and, you know, it's it, you can't just fly around with Valkyries alone. And <laughs> it just it's not going to put too much pressure on. So anyways, coming up, trying to catch these Mutas, that plus one is done. So that is a huge, huge difference there for the Valkyrie attack couple of static D going up and there is that plus one armor we were talking about before vulture speed actually on the way I don't know what vulture speed is going to end up doing vulture speed sometimes you do get first for harassment purposes but if you look at this look at this a huge line of sunkens oh god we're going to see some fancy micro here uh, a huge line of sunkens up and you can't get into some of these other bases so I don't know what bishop is going to actually get done uh, with that, with his vultures that he's going to be making here. Now, does Dodge those Scourge very importantly? Fengji tries to keep those out of range because if he can see them, he can micro against them and shoot them down. Like, watch. See? Just like that. There's a little patrol command. It's like you click towards and you patrol away at an angle and you can make the Valkyries slide away while they attack. But you need something for them to be attacking. Now, he loses two instantly there to the Scourge. So just a little bit of miss micro and he gets punished immensely. The Muta's very, very low. Some more Scourge are on the way because he knows that these are going to end up being a problem. Mutalisks having a little bit of a hard time, but 
As the Scourge come up, of course, the Valkyries do have to turn and run. Oh, man, he's going to end up losing a lot of his Valkyries here. Honestly, looking at this, I think that this is pretty good uh, for Fengji right now. This drop has some potential. There's not a big standing army or anything. Kindness Plating on the way is making some Ultras. Can he actually get either some drone damage or maybe even a hatchery? We'll see. Bringing up some more in this dropship. Oh, God. The Mutas try to get on top of everything. He does pick off the dropship, but loses a lot of the Mutas. The Mutas were already pretty badly injured. And this attack coming in, it is scary because he's so light on units. But I don't know how much damage he'll actually get done. He goes after the Evolution Chamber. Unfortunately for him, that Evolution Chamber uh, is not upgrading right now. It looks like he's already got the plus two carapace. So uh, that upgrade he's trying to deny, he will not be successful in denying. Gets the Ultra's Cavern, so that's good. And, you know, one Ultra obviously is not going to be able to deal with this. He'll, he'll be able to make some more. Gets the other Evolution Chamber, also not upgrading. Two more are being remade here at the Natural. Uh, these side bases, this one not mining fully yet. More factories starting to come up. Siege mode on the way. And you can see he's trying to hide in a location that's like hard to get to for ultras. But of course, they will be able to clean this all up. So that's the end of that kind of a uh, pressure put on there uh, momentarily by Bishop. Let's try to take a look at the state of this game right now. So the barracks have lifted off. This is a very common move. Once you actually get your factories going, you want to send these out and have them scout for you. Lots of mines around. Good SCV count at 51. Only 37 drones for four bases. That is a little bit light. For sure. That is a little bit light. The Ultralist Cavern is back. Where is it? There it is. Uh, getting Ultralist Speed. He never did get to finish that upgrade. It looks like Fengji has closed off all the different ways in. So you can only attack by air. And honestly, these will not last that long. So I don't think we're going to see too many attacks into these side bases. He may just try to run him dry and deny the rest of the bases that could be taken by Zerg. Now, over at Bishop's side, he is getting into about six factories, uh, two more armories here. So he might actually continue to go uh, for ship uh, attack upgrades. That is not an uncommon thing. It's something that Light kind of populari popularized is making uh, a lot of Valkyries throughout the game when you're going mech against, uh, against Zerg. Definitely could be useful. Looks like he's trying to clear these eggs now. This could be a location that gets hurt. Uh, if he drops all on this side, looks like he's going to do double vulture drops. Hmm. All right. Going to try to lay some mines down, perhaps, or just snipe some drones. Doesn't look like this is going to be overly effective. I guess these will end up killing a few drones over in this fourth base location. But honestly, not that bad. The other drop doesn't do very much at all. We have plus one uh, melee attack coming. I believe that is plus one. Let's just check. Yeah, plus one melee attack as well as that plus three carapace, fl plus two flyer carapace coming as well for Fengji. And it is a plus uh, two air attack that is being made right here. So there you go. Okay, hey, we really have a very good idea of what's going on here. This doesn't look like a game that either side can win anytime soon. Uh, like, neither neither player has good attack potential right now. Now, this is interesting. 12 mutas being made. So, remember earlier, Fengji knocked out a lot of the uh, Valkyries. He may be thinking, you know what? I don't think you're still making Valks. I think it's just Vulture Tank at this point. And if you pop 12 mutas out at that point and just fly around and kill Siege Tanks, that will literally just win you the game. That You won't even have to do anything else. You kill the tanks and suddenly Terran will never catch up. So uh, he does see that these are being made, but he has been making at least a few Valkyries. Like we did we did see at least a couple still out there, unless they got sniped when we weren't watching. Not actually sure where they're at, honestly. Like there's so many yellow dots on the map. I'm jumping around trying to find them, guys, and I can't really see them right now. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, it, they'll, they'll, they'll show up as soon as the mutas hit, if they're still alive. Uh, he's also getting Charon boosters here for the Goliath, so definitely wants to add some Goliaths in uh, for that anti-air. That might point towards him having fewer uh, Valkyries than we thought as well. Now, the Muta's flying in. This is a big moment for Fengji. This is the third base, and it's got a lot of SCVs here. It hasn't mined that much. He's only mined like 500 gas out of the 3,000 so far. Uh, not too many minerals either, like 200 per patch. 
Uh, so, yeah, this is this is some great harassment. Okay, there are the Valks. He does have three. That plus two is still on the way. Not ready quite yet. Definitely doesn't want to lose his command center. You might want to lift it, though, and let it eat Scourge and try to hurt it with the Valks. But actually, you might not have enough. Uh, either way, it looks like the command center is going to end up falling. Very unfortunate. Luckily, Bishop does have this other base in the bottom left right now. Still has a lot of mines on, out on the map, so not too easy to attack him. I also kind of like this group of Marines. This is just to catch, like, incoming drops. Generally, a game like this will evolve into Zerg running around with drops as well. Lots of Ultras being made. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Starts loading up the drops immediately. Uh, I mean, this could go towards the main. I think it, it might be good to just go after this base. You know, if you shut down a mining base, that's going to be terrible uh, for a bishop right now. Now, the Goliath's out on the map. Uh, the Mutalists probably want to stay away. Uh, these Mutas can beat these Goliaths, but if we have a bunch of Valkyries show up as well, it's going to turn very one-sided very quickly. The Valkyries actually... Okay, there they go. They do start to go towards these Mutas, and that is a hell of a lot of damage going down. He has that plus two attack ready as well, and the Mutas have to turn around. A lot of damage being put on them. Now, here comes the drop from Fengji. If this drop does well... I think that he is he's going to be able to just win this game. Not a lot in here. Kind of a deeper wall here. It's it's mostly closing off the area, so it actually might slow him down from getting on top of production. You are going to have to turn around as bishop. There's no way that your reinforcements will be able to clear this out. So he does start to turn around here. The Valkyries flying to the south. Uh, probably going to look to catch Mutas and Overlords in here. And he should be able to kill everything off. Uh, it looks like, you know, the drop, not that deadly. A lot of Scourge coming in, though, trying to catch these. And you know what? That is... Fengji's use of Scourge this game has been magnificent. He has killed off so many Valkyries at this point, And if you are not on top of reducing that Valkyrie count, like, you are going to be in a ton of trouble uh, as Zerg. But he's done, a, he's done a good job with that. The drop does supply block Bishop. Bishop's not dead or anything. This still doesn't look like a game that can just end. Dude, that is so many Ultras. Oh my god. And he can go for a drop again. Don't forget, he lost every Valkyrie. So as long as you avoid the Goliaths, you can kind of fly around anywhere you want. Uh, and of course, as he sends Overlords out, you can see he's kind of... Look, let's zoom out a little bit, right? He's spreading Overlords out a little bit. So this is going to allow him to see mines, maybe send some Lings through, maybe send Mutas to clean up the map a bit so he can start running around with his Ultras. But honestly, Bishop needs to get on the map and gain some map control. Uh, right now, this it's like, I feel like Fengji is about to take real control of this game. He's down 20 workers, but within 10 supply. So the actual, and don't forget, the supply efficiency of Zerg units is just higher. Like Zerglings are a half supply. You know, Ultras are like no supply at all. What is it, four? It's like ridiculous. Uh, and of course, you know, Hydra is the big one at, at one supply each. Um, anyways, flies in here and Bishop's still cleaning out these eggs. So he is going to get in and be able to save this. Obviously, you can just lift off the command center as well. So that's not going to just die. Your base isn't just going to explode or anything. But this is annoying to run around and deal with for a Bishop. In fact, Sometimes you'll see uh, something like, for instance, the Mutas could fly in here later and snipe an assimilator. If you get rid of one of them, mech units can no longer reinforce. But honestly, I want to see Bishop kill these eggs so he has freedom of movement from the center into the side. Because I think him playing inside of his bases defensively isn't going to work. Because if he's not controlling the middle, there's no way to get to this base to save it. And honestly, like, doesn't matter how many bunkers you make, plus one Marines against plus... Uh, five Carapace Ultras will do nothing. So the Muta's getting on top of these Siege Tanks. Oh my god, more Valkyries coming up. And the Valkyries, like, they're doing a pretty darn good job against these Mutas, but the Mutas do have that plus two Carapace. Plus three is on the way for the Valks. <laughs> the few remaining Marines out on the map coming uh, to help as well. And he will push back the Mutas. That was actually very efficient for Bishop. A lot of money has been sent on the Mutalisks. Has it been good enough Mutalisk usage? Like, I appreciate the attempts at these switches back into Mutas every time he kills Valkyries, but it seems like Bishop is so on top of remaking those Valks. And by the way, 
All the attacks have been on this side. I do feel like if he just attacks the bottom left, does he not know? Right, he's got a base here. Does he not know about this? Because like Bishop's entire army has been stuck over here. So it's been able to like, okay, clear this out, go up here, clear this out. We keep having big fights. And if if the entire army just attacked to the bottom left, I can't imagine a world in which Bishop can hold this. Like it'll just all be destroyed by the time his mech army can make it over there. So right now the ultras, well, they're gonna come down and obviously ultras can't do damage against ultras. They do like literally one damage. Uh, <laughs> concussive damage plus all the armor is kind of insane. Um, they do, they, they just do a terrible job. So, uh, you're basically like kind of like buffering for them and, and laying mines down. Big drop being set up for this location. Comes in with the mutas, starts hitting some of this anti-air. Ooh, I like the mines going down. A well-placed siege tank, a lot of well-placed siege tanks, in fact. Valkyries coming in, and the Valkyrie's going to be able to shred mutas. Oh my god, the amount of damage on those mutas in a matter of seconds. Absolutely overwhelming. Going to kill the overlords as well. The Valkyries being worth their weight in gold at the moment. Uh, but it does look like the ultra is going to clear a little bit. They're killing quite a few SCVs. They kill the siege tanks that are in the area as well. Obviously, Bishop has more that can come up also. Now an ultra does end up finding this base. So I think this might be the first time Fengji has seen that. I do feel like this game could be over already if he had attacked this earlier. Because this has been like the backbone of the economy of Bishop for so long at this point. So these fuel ultras do still have to be cleaned up. And as he cleans those up, he can get back to mining this base. The Valkyrie's going a little bit ham at the moment. And they do end up running into all the Mutas and Scourge. Looks like Fengshi thought he could do a bit better there with his Scourge, but not going to be the case. A lot of Mutalists ending up falling. Uh, Ultras, in the meantime, starting to clear this bottom left. And this is what I was talking about, right? Those plus one Marines literally just tickle the ultras they do damage like every other attack to the ultras it's just it's terrible so uh he, he the way that bishop's been playing this where he's been very defensive inside this region he just can't get over here to defend his valkyries are doing a ton for him no doubt he's up in supply by a lot but his economy consists of literally only this base command center is gonna have to lift off the Valkyries continue to continue to run around and deal like huge amounts of damage. He's killed a, like unbelievable amounts of overlords. We have plus three care pace on the way. Here's a funny thing. Like you can make more Scourge. How do you defend? Like, do you just have to start making spores as Fengji? Is Bishop going to win this off of supply blocks? I'm actually starting to get some chills here. Bishop could win this game based purely off the Valkyries, which is not something you think of because they can't attack anything. But, like, he's keeping the supply solo. Look at this, 108 of 110, and it's going to get worse. There's, like, no anti-air to deal with those. Now he's attacking this location. He's going to be able to clean this base very easily. His army can fight ultras for sure. Right? Like, ultras are not, like, the, the best tech against this. I don't... I can't believe this. Like, I was certain this entire game that Fengji was going to win, and now I'm really not. 65 of 142. He's had to spend just about everything on remaking these overlords. He is making another big army. One thing to mention, his army is going to become more and more Zergling based. Depleted. 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 The longer a game goes on Nemesis, the harder it gets for Zerg. Now the Valkyries... Still running around dealing ridiculous damage. Gets a huge supply block off. This is kind of crazy. He even has plus one uh, air armor now. <laughs> For these Valks, it's just ridiculous. Ridiculous is the only way I can put it. He's killing off every single Overlord at this point. I think Bishop is literally going to win because there's a gas-starved gas Fengji who never really made like a Hydralisk Den or anything like that. He just doesn't have a good high quality way to defend his overlords. 
So he's perpetually supply blocked despite having thousands of minerals. It's like, look, he's making five, six overlords, but I mean, he's gonna lose that many more again very, very shortly as the Valkyries do another lap around the map. Fengji trying to look for some sort of way in. Bishop is only mining off of this one location, so he's actually almost dry as well. Siege Shanks going out through the center. Plus three fire care pace is coming up, which is helpful against the Valks. Like it definitely, it does a lot, but there's such a good Valkyrie count and we don't have a lot of gas for Fengji. So it's like very hard to commit enough to actually kill those off. And at that point, you're like literally playing only Zerglings. You can see his production tab. He's, he's making Scourge. He's trying to get ready to kill those off, but uh, oh God, they find the overlords. They find the drops that Fengji wants to go in for a big attack with. Unbelievable game. Unbelievable game. Definitely looked Fengji favored for most of it. But as the game stretched out and as the Valkyries just continually were remade, I think Fengji was almost caught off guard by how many Valkyries did get make, made this game because he's, kill, he's killed off like 12 or something. Maybe more. Uh, and they just kept on coming, kept on coming, and... Uh, yeah, that's gonna be it. GG, Bishop wins another one.